This is Euphorbia Whistleberry Garnet. And um, what I'm going to show you today is how to take away the flowers. Now, I love this particular plant. It's, uh, it's synonym, which is another name accepted, is Euphorbia Cariacis Whistleberry Garnet, which, to be honest, I never knew. But apparently it is. I've always associated it as the same as um, Robbie Eye, which is a, a, an aggressively spreading plant. And, and it's my belief that this is still um, a bit of a spreader. It's, it's not like the normal Cariacis, which is the uh, clump formers. This is more of a spreading type. But what I want to do today is to show you how to remove the, the, the spent flowers. But at the moment, they're not spent. It's May at the moment, early mid-May. And we've uh, we've got absolutely loads of these flowers. Now, I keep it in this... I'll show you this here. This is what I keep it in. I keep it in this... It's a sheep bale feeder. Uh, with a, a silver birch, a Jackie Monte eye in the middle, and then this euphorbia is all the way around it, and that's always been the intention is to is to absolutely fill this with this particular spurge. One problem we have with most euphorbias is that around June time they start popping out the seeds, and it can be a problem if you if you don't want any more seedlings. But one way to deal with it is at this time of year, sort of mid May take back the flowers uh, and go back into the green so that you can uh, see the plant itself without the flowers. Now the flowers have been looking absolutely stunning throughout um, the, this year and uh, it's a shame to get rid of them but now's the time for me to remove these because what it'll do is it'll encourage the plant itself to spread even more and although I said it's a spreading plant I do want it to spread in here I don't want it to um, I don't want it to just sit as a clump so I'm going to remove these uh, flower heads. Uh, if you wanted to find some seedlings, you would have to leave it and it will produce them and it'll pop them all over. And on a hot day, if you sit quietly in about June, you'll often hear them popping um, the seed heads away. Now, the other thing that uh, spreads these seeds around are, are ants. Ants can pick them up and wander away into the garden with them and you can find them in all sorts of unusual places, nowhere near where you planted the euphorbia. And that's... Uh, that's the action of ants. So I shall show you how to deal with this particular one. I've got several in this, in this sort of sheep feeder. So I need to deal with it now. So what we do, as with all the other euphorbias, we find the flower, which is this here. Oh, you must wear gloves when you're doing this. I've got a pair of secateurs. It's as simple as that. Wear gloves because it does have a milky sap which will burn you if you're not careful and today is a, is a sunny day Quite hot now. What I will do is I will go beyond uh, There you see the cluster of leaves around here and what you really need to do Is you need to go beyond that you don't want to be cutting them just above it wouldn't hurt if you did That'd be uh, okay to do but my recommendation is to go down as far as you can beyond that and simply snip off. Uh, I can't get in quite close enough to show you this fully, but basically go down as far as you dare on the stem and clip it back. And then what you'll end up with is this. And as you can see, it's only exuding a little bit of sap at this time of year, but um, nevertheless it is producing it. So what we end up with is we end up with that. That there. And what you've got to do then is, uh, is go around each flower head individually go down track it down i'll push this one down so you can see go all the way down clip as far down as you can and then uh, the new leaves will all start showing i'll uh, i'll clip away at this and then we'll we'll catch back up when i've uh, when i've finished this particular thing so there we are after about 20 minutes of clearing as you can see, I've taken off all the spent flower heads, or the, the flower heads that were due to pop out the seeds, and it leaves this lovely, fresh look. Uh, whistleberry garnet, because it has these lovely tones to its leaves early on in the uh, year, to the leaves. Uh, and which, in actual fact, we can show you uh, just what these leaves look like. So you have these lovely garnet tones.
and in the flower as well. Now, if you wanted it to set seed, it will. I found one or two seedlings. The trouble being with this one is because it's called Whistleberry Garn, it is a type. Um, sorry, not a type. It is a, a kind of a, a what, what can I say about it? It's not naturally found doing what it does. Although I probably find that a bit hard to believe that it's not just a, a standard type from what it's doing. But it is nevertheless a little spreader. Uh, irrespective that the RHS have, have classed it as Cariacus as its synonym. I think it's Amidagloides, but I, I could be proven wrong. They're supposed to know more than me. Um, and there's little sections like this one here that you'll see, and you'll think it's a seedling, but that is actually attached to the root zone. I've done a little bit of weeding through here and uh, dragged a, a cultivator through, and I've snapped one of them off, actually. But if you look around, you will actually pick up seedlings. So this has been in here two seasons now. Uh, well, so this is the second season, so that's uh, two years. Oh, it's in its second year now. But it's really looking nice now. It's starting to do exactly what I thought it would do. And here's all the spent flowers, all the chopped off flowers. A uh, common name is honeydew for this thing, for this plant. Uh, and I, I, I can't really make it out on this camera, but there is uh, glistening, glistening sort of water looking stuff, which uh, is probably what the ants are after. And you can see again, some. if you look closely at some of these, you can see the little seed pods developing. So we've got in there before, it's caused me a problem. The idea was always for it to look good in here. But the one thing I didn't want it to start doing was sending seeds everywhere. So to that end, we've stopped it. So round about mid-May is the time to start doing it. Wear your gloves, make sure you do wear gloves uh, because it does have this sticky sap. Uh, and if you don't wear gloves, once you've finished, if, even if you're used to it, um, chopping these things back, you will find that this sap turns a bit of a dark colour with the soil getting on it. And it's a bit of a pain to get off your hands. Uh, it does come off, but it's uh, better if you wear your gloves. And then you won't have this sort of problem. So I love that now. I actually love the freshness that it brings about. And this plant will now start uh, actually thickening out again and it'll cover this whole area now if you don't want to go to the trouble of individually pruning out every one of those there's it's not a problem what you can do is you can get your head shears and you can actually shear it back to about a foot and a half above the ground and it'll come back with loads and loads of fresh leaves the leaves that you chop um the stems that you you actually chop will actually send out loads of leaves uh, leaves and it'll um, and it'll be quite in fact can we see one there oh no that's just a crossing one um it, it will actually send out loads and loads of leaves uh and and it'll thicken up really quickly but i prefer to do it this way because i like to keep this fresh look now if i'd have clipped it completely back within a month this would be thick again but i'm, I'm wanting it to uh keep these more mature leaves there's one two three four five plants in here that i planted and i'm hoping this time next year that, that will completely cover that section um, if you can pair them with something in this case like I say I've got it in this sheep bale feeder it's not the cow feeder the cow feeder is double the size of this um, and I use these in my garden I've got three of these particular feeders in this garden as you've probably seen on some of my other YouTube videos so that's pretty much it that's how to deal with your spent flowers. Now I have got Euphorbia caracius over there that you can see. There's one there, that one there. I shall do exactly the same treatment to that because again, I don't want that sending seeds everywhere. That was a seedling itself I brought from another garden. Uh, I want to remove all those flowers and they get to a point in the next three or four weeks where they start looking wishy-washy. All that yellow disappears and they end up looking like uh, a washed out version of themselves. And I don't want that. I want them to uh, I want them to be gone. So we shall take those off as well. We should take we should do the same treatment. While we're here, we might as well explain it. So we've got that big leaf all the way down. Uh, and you would take that big thick stem there all the way down as far as you can get with it and just clip it, take it out. Uh, discard it into your um, 
into your green bin and it'll be fine. But remember, wear your gloves. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed that one. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da!